this human being within a uh, It can fluctuate between 11 degrees and 14, 15 degrees. If, some, if the sun and moon are conjunct within 11 or between about 12 to 15 degrees of the nodes, there's going to be an eclipse. It might be a partial eclipse or a full eclipse, but there'd be an eclipse. They'll, they'll, the shadow of the moon will block some of the sun's light coming down to the earth for a short time, for a few, for an hour or two. Because it takes the moon two hours to move through one degree and the sun's moving a little bit. So it takes about two hour eclipse, usually last two hours and a bit, a lunar eclipse. So here, there's to me two eclipses. Here's the, uh, the one beside it, you have the earth in the center, the moon and the sun, but it's at the north node. The moon's come around, it's moving north and it's conjuncting. So there's two types of solar. These are called solar eclipses because the moon blocks the light of the sun from the earth. The past, the memories block, they come up and they block the future hopes or the, the looking for the future. And there's a tendency to feel lost in that darkness. What does it mean? But this, the north node would be considered the more positive of the eclipses, the south node, the more negative because it's just that the interpretations of the nodes but really, they're both sensitive points. They both represent the high tides of the month. And when it's on this node, so many times the moon could be going along here, but it's north or south. It's not exactly at the same degree north or south of latitude, and it, it will be up or down. It won't make an eclipse. The shadow will miss it. It'll be at the same point. It'll be up or down, but it won't block the sun's light. So that's the solar eclipses. There's two every year, one, one each half of the year. Then you have the lunar eclipses when the moon's on one side and the sun's on the other. So the sun and moon are opposition in a chart, and the nodes are within 12 to 15 degrees of it. Technically, one way it's 14 something, uh, under 15 generally. Um, it can be a little bit less, but it can't be more. So you have this um, the lunar eclipse, in the opposition where the Earth is blocking the light of the sun on the moon, so the moon gets darker. It gets darker, but it turns when it's really complete. Then it's sort of black for a second, but usually it's a reddish color because the sun light bends around the Earth, and some of the light hits the moon, but it's blocking most of it. And so you can have the new moon with the sun at the north node, and the moon at the south node, or the sun at the south node with the moon at the north node. And four moons, the past and the future, the sun and moon oppose each other. You're pulled back into the past, you're pulled in the future, and there's some opposition going on in your life, and then it gets eclipsed as a shadow. Whoa. It becomes a little more intense, a little less rational. But certainly, you may not be able to me you can measure it, but you're feeling it. Something's happening here, but you don't have, you might even have happy words, but there's still stuff going on that's feeling irrational that come in and these things get eclipsed. So these are be perhaps better position, better drawings of the new moon solar eclipse. So here's the sun, there's the earth, there's the moon going around in a circle on it and the circles on the eye. So you see the plane of the earth sun and you see the plane of the moon going around and you see the earth on the earth, sun earth, earth going around the sun earth plane, sun moon plane, sun earth plane and the moon's going around on its, around the, around the earth at its plane, at its angle. When it hits that angle, there's the, there's the eclipse, or it's the nodes. It can go wide there, but it can be up or down and not be close enough to nodes the shadow can miss. But this, this shows it a little bit better. These were some newer drawings that I added to this. Still, this is some time ago. Okay, and the full moon, you see the moon moves around to the other side, moves around to the other side, so the, the nodes, the earth and the sun can be anywhere, but the nodes for the, for the moon to the earth, when the sun's on the one side of it and the moon's on the other side of it, that's the full moon eclipse to the earth will block the moon. It can be on anywhere in the chart. Okay, next subject, retrogrades. This is the best drawing I can come up with, retrogrades. 
to explain it. Essentially, if you've ever been driving in a car and there's a train going along the way, and or you're in a train and another train's passing you, or you're in a car and a train's going, and there's two vehicles moving. One's moving faster than the other, but you're moving past it. It looks like one is moving forward and the other one, the other one is moving backwards. There's this like sense of well, why it looks like it's going backward. They're both going back forward, but one's moving slower than the other. So the two speeds getting compared make that effect of it looking um, like it moving backward. Planets in their orbit around the sun, they don't go retrograde. They're just going continuously around, around, around at different speeds. Faster at Mercury, slower as you go out. But when you start... When, so when something is retrograde, it's going to be on the same side of the Earth, of the Sun as the Earth is on. It, the planet gets closest to the Earth, the speeds get comparable, and it looks like the background of the sky looks like it's going backward. So when we look at the outer planets, Mars, Jupiter, whenever they're retrograde, Earth has come close to it. But it means that the retrograde always happens when Mars is opposed to the Sun, or where Jupiter is opposed to the Sun, and uh, 60 degrees or so either way. So, as the Sun, say, take this is look at Mars. Here's the Earth. So, the Earth's going around. If we look at Mars, okay, um, when Mars is coming along, it, well, we'll see in the Earth's orbit. If the Earth is going around, we're coming along, there's a certain point. Earth's, Earth is going along, it's here, here the Earth is, at this point, the Earth is the opposite side from the Sun, but it's from the, from Mars, but it would be, the Sun would seem to be, would be in the chart, it would be saying the Sun is conjunct Mars, but that means the Earth is opposed to Mars, because the Sun's with the Sun conjunct Mars. So then as it starts moving the other way, there's a certain point where it's at its widest point, these arrows point to the widest point, a little past the square, where the planet, where Earth starts moving back in as the circle starts going in. As it starts going in, those planet, that planet like Mars, will start looking at this at this point, it starts, it holds steady, it's stationary for a while, and then it starts moving backwards. As the Earth is moving to the inner part, the Mars will appear, it's still moving forward slowly, but the sky and the signs of the zodiac it's in, it'll look like it's moving, it will technically be moving backwards through the signs of the zodiac. And it'll still keep moving backwards, backwards, backwards until it gets to this point where the sun, where the earth gets past this and suddenly it holds steady for a bit and then the earth starts moving forward and the Mars is moving forward. They're both moving forward, but at this point, they both seem to be moving forward in unison, whereas while it's in this inner zone, when it's closest to the earth, the speed, the Earth is moving faster, and it's because it's moving faster, it's making the Mars look like it's going retrograde. Same with Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. Now, all the planets will be on one side or another in opposition. They're on the other half of the chart from where the Sun would be in your chart to be retrograde. So you take the chart of the Sun, and you see it trying one side or another, and if, if the other planets, you have it marked as retrograde, and it's closer to that, it's not retrograde, something's wrong. It's retrograde when it's on that far side. Okay, so when planets bunch up, when they were all bunched up in the 80s, all in Libra, Scorpio, and Sag, when, when the sun went through the Taurus, every, people were born with six, seven planets retrograde. Of course, in progressions, that's very dramatic because there'll be a time when it unretrogrades or when it unfolds and there's be really big turning points in a person's life, very extreme for those extreme charts. When you're looking at Mercury Venus, you still there's two the Sun conjuncts Mercury and Sun conjuncts Venus when it's retrograde, but also when it's direct. There's two conjunctions of the Sun and Mercury and, and Sun and Venus. We'll talk with Mercury. Okay, we'll talk with Venus first. But when the Sun conjuncts Venus, there's a uh, superior conjunction. There's a conjunction when it's really close to the Earth, closest to the Earth, and there's a conjunction when it's furthest away. I think that's called the inferior. I, I'm not forget now. I could be wrong lots of the words, but there's a conjunction when it's close and when it's going further away. When, Mer when, the, when, Mer when the Sun and Mercury and Venus are conjunct and they're both direct, it means that Venus is on the other side of the Sun and very far away. 
and your sun will be stronger and the Venus will be on the other side. Almost in opposition to the Earth, but we're measuring from the Earth, so it looks like it's in conjunction with the sun. It looks like it moves like a pendulum, but it's actually moving in a circle. But when it gets around to the other side, it starts moving back to the Earth. It's a point where it goes stationary. Then the speeds become comparable. And when it gets closer to the Earth, it starts being, you start, start the background starts looking like it's moving against the way the sun's moving forward. It looks like Venus moving backwards. And that's the Venus retrograde period. So when it conjuncts, when the sun and moon are conjunct, uh, sun and Venus are conjunct, and it's retrograde, and Venus is retrograde. That's the conjunction with Venus in between the Earth and the Sun. When Venus is closest to the Earth, and the same with Mercury, when it's closest to the Earth. So, the most powerful influence of Mercury or Venus to the Earth is when it's retrograde. The weakest is when it's opposition. So, how can I say it's so negative when there's a retrograde or when it's Mercury? It's not that it's so negative. What happens is every when it's Mercury everybody's mind is being accentuated. Everybody's thinking more and measuring detail more and being more wired about specific things. And their, their thinking has been accentuated. And it's because everybody's doing that, they're running across each other's different systems and things get, wires get crossed and people going fast, people interfering with each other's things. Your parameters of your sensitivity have extended. And so have others people and they're running into each other and you're not used to allowing for that gauge, like for dealing with. So there's, Accidents, tickets, people misgaged. They're not thinking, seemingly not thinking clearly, but it's everybody. So generally, say don't make, don't make big starts. Don't communicate. Don't take a trip. Don't, don't sign contracts when Mercury's retrograde. Don't start a business when Mercury's retrograde. Okay. However, sometimes if Mercury's retrograde and it's going to go bad for one person, it might go really good for the other person. But decisions get made. So some, you can't always just use a blind thing. Don't sign anything when Mercury retrograde. You really just have to read the fine print two or three times and double think it, triple think it to assess, to allow that the other person is doing the same and think it through. Same thing with the emotions with Venus. There's a lot of, if you go into, um, onto the web and you checked different ledger grades and there'll be all kinds of different drawings and things about it. But this one kind of simplifies it for looking at charts, looking at your chart, where it is in your chart. If it's with the other planets, Mars no, it's rest, if Mars is on the side opposing, more or less on the side, on the third of the chart opposing the sun, it's going to be retrograde. Jupiter, Neptune, Venus, Pluto, all of them. But Mercury, Venus is when it's conjunct the sun and going retrograde. But it's between the sun and the earth. That's when their retrograde periods are. They, it's like the mind and the emotions start becoming stronger and they interfere with your soul or your heart. Or you're just normal confidence and these things come up saying, what do I want? What do I want? You start thinking, wanting things more, you start doing things more. It starts making your behavior not as smooth or as potentially successful. One more. No, I think that's all I want to do for this for now. Um, we'll be, we haven't used retrogrades or accentuated retrogrades in the natal chart. I don't think it's necessary. It's even if it's retrograde, even if there's bad aspects, you still have to make the, the planet go through the categories of the houses and the categories of science and work as best as you can. And if you've got a square between Mars and Neptune or Mars and Jupiter, you have to still have to use Mars to get the best to be as strong as you can in the degrees it's in, in the categories of each degree, in the categories of each sign, regardless of whether the aspects there or not, regardless of whether it's retrograde or not, you still have to use it like that. And Neptune or Jupiter in the sign it's in will have to be utilizing it and it's trying to get it going. And you're supposed to get both going as best they can, and there'll always be a stress factor there. But it doesn't mean you can't work with it, it just takes more effort. 